We're going to continue our work in chapter 20. Today we'll be working on lesson 3, 20.3 line relationships. This is coming from page 400 or sorry, 522 in your textbook. If you don't already have your journal out or your textbook, go ahead and pause the video and get those things. Please label your math journal with lesson 20.3 line relationships. Turn in your textbook to page 522. You are then going to need to take notes on these three vocabulary words. If you don't want to write all of the definition down, you at least should draw the pictures for each word. Go ahead and pause the video and then we'll discuss. All right, so like you may have noticed, this chapter is really heavy in vocabulary. Um, so you're going to need to have access to these words and their meanings on quick hand until you have them memorized in your head. So today we're just going to be talking about lines and how lines can interact with one another. Those interactions when a line crosses um, another line or when a line does not cross an another line um, forms special kinds of lines. And so we need to know the names of those. So first, uh, kind of line that we'll be talking about today are intersecting lines. Intersecting lines are lines that cross each other at exactly one place and this forms four different angles. So for example, um, if I draw two lines, and remember lines continue in both directions forever, so we draw arrows at the end. If I draw those two lines, they intersect in exactly one place and by doing so, I have now made four angles, one, two, three, and four. Now, often what it happens is uh, sometimes the angles can be um, either two obtuse angles, which means they're greater than 90 degrees, two, and two acute angles, which means two that are less than 90 degrees, or if you get the lines to intersect just right, it can actually form four right angles when those two lines intersect. So um, when this happens, these are called intersecting lines, whether they form obtuse and acute angles or right angles, they're called intersecting lines. Parallel lines are lines that never intersect and they are always the same distance apart. That's very, very important. Parallel lines are Parallel lines are always the same distance apart. They're never going to touch no matter how far they continue out into space. They are always going to stay the same width apart. Perpendicular lines is our next vocabulary word. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form four right angles. So like I mentioned up here, these are intersecting lines, but more specifically, their name is perpendicular lines because they make four right angles. So in your textbook, there's this chart and it has some helpful tips for you. You don't need to write this down, but just know you can always go back to look at it. The main thing that you might need to look at it for is how to read and write uh, these types of lines. So when we read intersecting lines, we say uh, the name of the line by the points on it. So for example, this first one is line AB intersects with line CD at point E is where they intersect. That's how we would read it. Um, the way we would write it, again, like we did in 20.1, you write the name of the line and then with a picture of a line on top of it, and then you just write the word intersects. Uh, intersects to show that they are intersecting lines. Um, parallel lines seem similar. You can write line and then the two points on the line FG and HJ. Um, and this symbol here, which looks like two parallel lines, hello, <laughs> what a coincidence, uh, is the symbol that means it's parallel to. So writing it out, you just would write the two line names with that parallel sign in between them. Then perpendicular lines are lines that, again, cross and intersect, and they make four right angles, so that means they're all square corners. And this symbol here, which looks like two, um, it looks like an intersecting line that's forming a 
two square uh, corners, two right angles, is the symbol to show perpendicular. So um, this might be helpful to write down back on your notes page. Um, I'll write this in another color so you can see I'll write in green. Uh, the symbol that we use to write it. So perpendicular lines, we use two lines side by side to show that lines are perpendicular. Um, or sorry, that was for parallel. Excuse me one moment. Let me erase that. Um, going back, perpendicular lines is like an upside down T. Parallel lines are the two lines up and down that won't intersect. That's the symbol for them. And then uh, intersecting lines, we just have to write the word intersect. All right, so one um, activity that you could do if you'd like is to take a piece of paper and see if you can fold it to make different lines. You don't have to do this, but it might be a fun way to pass some time if you have some extra time on your hands is uh, taking a piece of paper and folding it in half and then fold that half in again. And when you unfold it, what you're gonna find is your piece of paper will have a bunch of parallel lines across it. They will never um, intersect. But then if you fold this paper in half again, now you'll have a bunch of intersecting lines and they are all perpendicular lines because they form right angles. So if you want to come back to do that activity later, you're welcome to, but you do not have to. All right, so we're going to start off by looking at some pictures of real life things and seeing the kind of lines that are made. So let's take a look at number two. The directions say name any line relationships you see in each figure, right? Intersecting, parallel, or perpendicular. So um, let's practice those uh, symbols as well, intersecting, parallel, and perpendicular. Remember intersecting, we just have to write the word intersect. Um, so number two, I see the uh, lines on the fence go up and down like this. So what do you guys think? Is that parallel, intersecting, or perpendicular? These are parallel lines. Parallel. And the symbol for that is just the two lines side by side. I also see some... Um, lines that do intersect on the fence. If I have those fence posts and do you see the one that comes across the top and the bottom to make the gate? Uh, those are intersecting lines, but more specifically, they intersect to form right angles. So those are perpendicular lines. Perpendicular. And the line to show that is, uh, the symbol to show that is like an upside down T. All right, number three. I see a telephone uh, pole and uh, made out of metal. And wow, there are a lot of lines going on in that picture on number three. Most of them are intersecting lines. Some of them, if you notice, there are some that run straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Those could be parallel, but most of the lines are going jagged all over the place every which way. So most of those are intersecting because they are running all over each other, crossing. However, some parallel lines are also made. Some parallel lines are also made that um, like the ones that go across the top and the bottom of the phone pole. So some parallel lines are made in the figure as well. And remember that symbol is just the two lines side by side. All right, taking a look at number four, I'll have to write kind of small here. I wrote a little big, whoopsies. Um, so number four, the lines on the kite, I see the rainbow lines are all going this way. I see none of them are touching though along the tail. So those lines that are all going like this are called what? Those are all parallel because they will never cross and meet and they stay the same distance apart. So those are parallel. 
that symbol is just the two lines up and down. And then also, however, we have the lines going across the kite this way, and they are meeting at a point there. I definitely don't see right angles, so those would just be intersecting lines. So the lines that are coming across the kite on the main side and meeting, uh, those are just intersecting. So it's okay that um, some of these, most of these pictures have more than just one line. All right, number five. Okay, that picture is a little bit hard to see. It looks like there's some different equipment. Maybe is that a piano? Sorry, it's kind of hard to tell. Let's see if I can zoom in. Uh, okay, my best guess is that's a piano or maybe some sort of child's play table. But uh, the lines that I'm seeing on that picture mostly are the leg posts on there. I'm drawing over them if you pay close attention to that picture. And I see all of them are the same distance apart and none of them are meeting. So those would be parallel lines that are just all the same distance apart. Those are parallel. And the symbol for parallel is just the two lines side by side. Um, we do have some lines that are crossing those parallel lines. Some of them are uh, crossing um, to make right corners and some are crossing at an odd angle so we actually have all three lines oh we even if we look close we even have a window in the back that's making perpendicular so number five we see lots of different line relationships in there as well all right number seven uh through ten we're going to name any line relationship we see in these figures now these ones mostly will just be one uh number ten is going to have more than one but number seven let's go ahead and draw this in our notes we have two lines side by side that are not meeting and they're staying the same distance apart is that intersecting parallel or perpendicular those are parallel parallel lines never intersect never meet one uh, study tip for you that you can think of I'll do this in green. Do you see the double L's in the word parallel? Think when you see those double L's, it's just like the sign for perpendicular for parallel, which is those two lines side by side that never meet. That's a, a little study tip I used when I was your age to remember. All right, number eight. Uh, number eight, we have a line going across the bottom and one splitting up the top we do see that little blue box in the corner that tells us that's a right angle. So these lines are intersecting. Is that forming parallel, perpendicular, or intersecting lines that are making that right angle? Those are called perpendicular. Perpendicular lines, and the symbol for that is like the upside down T, which is exactly what that figure looks like. All right, number nine, All right? So we have one line coming across this way and another line coming across the other way. So these lines are definitely intersecting. Um, so they're not parallel. Um, are they perpendicular though? Do they form right angles? No, they don't. So these are just intersecting lines. They don't form right angles and they definitely are crossing at one point. So they are not parallel. They're just intersecting. All right, number 10. Number 10, we have a couple different lines because we have a lot happening here. So <coughs> first of all, um, we definitely have intersecting lines, right? We have uh, lines that are going up and down. We have a line going across. Um, now, looking at just that part of the picture already, what kind of line is that? That definitely is a perpendicular line because it is forming a right angle through those lines intersecting. Now, the next part of the picture was that we have these lines going up and down. And we have the line coming across. Now, when that line comes across like that, it intersects uh, that line. It's not forming any parallel lines. Instead, it's just, oh, sorry, move the page. Instead, this is just intersecting. 
So that one had a couple of different things going on. All right, let's take a look um, at this map. So you're going to have this on your independent work today as well. Uh, number 11 uh, says, name a street that appears to be parallel to South 17th Street. So I'm going to need to zoom in a little bit for some help. So we, we need to locate South 17th Street. So when I do that, um, I see that South 17th Street, South 17th Street runs across the map. Sorry, I can't zoom in and write at the same time. So South 17th Street is right here. We need to make a uh, name a street that is parallel, which means parallel lines are lines that never intersect. They always seem, stay the same distance apart. So I can actually see lots of streets that are parallel. I see 18th Street and 19th Street and 20th Street. Those are all parallel. Do you see how they all stay the same distance apart from each other? They never intersect or meet. So those are all parallel lines to South 17th Street. So number 11, we just need to write one though. So let's just write South 18th Street is parallel. All right, number 12. We'll erase those to get ready to find the next one. So obviously you can't write in your textbook, but you definitely can do this on your work page, tracing over to see the lines better. Number 12 says, name a street that appears to be parallel to Vernon Street. So again, trying to find a parallel uh, street to Vernon. So um, the second part of that is it needs to be parallel to Vernon and it needs to intersect South 17th Street. So let's first find Vernon Street. Vernon Street. And let's now also underline South 17th Street again. So we need this street that's whatever's parallel with Vernon. We need it to intersect with South 17th Street, which means it needs to cross. And we need it to run parallel with Vernon. So I see there's this street, Dairy Street, down below here that intersects with South 17th Street right here like they asked it to. And I notice that it's this, staying the same distance apart from Vernon Street. So that tells me it's parallel. So the correct street for that one is uh, Dairy Street, D-E-R-R-Y, Dairy Street. All right, and last one on this page, number 13. What street intersects both South 17th Street and South 19th Street? Oh, boy. And next part. So it needs to intersect 17th Street and 19th Street and appears to be perpendicular to them. So there's a lot going on. Let's break it up by part. So uh, let's take a look. It intersects South 17th Street. Let's underline that whole South 17th. South 17th. That's kind of hard to say. Say that six times fast. I dare you. It would be hard. <laughs> and then uh, South 19th Street. So I've underlined those. Those are running parallel. It asks which street intersects both of those and also appears to be perpendicular. So Basically, all it's saying there is it needs to intersect and be perpendicular. Well, a perpendicular line is just one that intersects to make a right angle. So we're not trying to find two separate streets here. It's just one street that crosses 17th and 19th by making right angles where they cross. So there's actually a couple of those. It's not going to be Dairy Street. I'll do this in red. Do you see Dairy Street here? It runs across them and it does intersect both of those streets, but it makes obtuse angles and it makes acute angles, not, um, not right angles. So that's not going to be it. Let me try in green and see if we can find the correct one that makes a right angle. So I do see um, some more streets up towards the top do intersect with 17th and 19th. So I'll 
under uh, highlight those. So that's um, Austin Street and also Chestnut Street. So both of those intersect. Now let's take a look. I see here that um, Austin Street definitely looks like it's forming right angles. They're square angles. I could fit a square right in there just fine. So Austin Street would be the best choice. Um, Chestnut Street does it as well, but it's a little bit harder to tell because it's at the top of the picture. It's a little bit harder to tell for me if this spot over here is going to be a right angle or not. So let's just pick our best uh, guess that we can see and we'll say that it's uh, Austin Street. So number 13, Austin Street. It intersects and makes perpendicular lines. All right, class, so today you're going to need to have those uh, vocabulary definitions absolutely in front of you while you do your work. Uh, today's assignment is to do 20.3 PW. You're going to do all of the problems. I recommend that you take out your um, practice workbook and have this video paused so that later on you can come back and check your work here. Uh, remember, this is required for you to do, but you're not handing it in to me. So that's why I've provided the answer key for you to grade your own work once you're done. And at the end of the week, you can tell me and let me know that you completed your assignment by checking it off of the checklist that I send to you. Okay. Um, and then also just as a reminder, I'll be sending out an end of the week quiz. So it's really important that you practice this. Um, material, you can use your notes. So make sure that if you didn't already, go back and add in those notes from uh, the first page. So you might want to restart the video and then you can come back and check your work when you are finished. Great job today. I will see you tomorrow.